Chapter 4 The enemy of God James 4 verses 1 to 4 From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust, and have not, ye kill, and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask, and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. 1 John 2 verses 15 to 17 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, James calls the twelve tribes that are scattered abroad in those days, and those in the tribulation period adulterers and adulteresses. This is because they choose to love the world and not him, just like Gomer, a type of the nation of Israel who committed spiritual adultery against God, who committed adultery against Hosea. Hosea 1 verse 2, the beginning of the word of the Lord, by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. If they do not choose to suffer for his name's sake and instead choose to do whatever the rest of the world is doing, they will end up taking the mark of the beasts, which is the ultimate act of spiritual adultery from which there is no forgiveness. James 4 verses 5 to 7, Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Psalm 138 verse 6, Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Proverbs 3 verse 34, Surely, he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. 1 Peter 5 verses 8 to 10 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. James 4 verse 8, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Hebrews 7 verse 19, For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. 1 Peter 1 verse 22, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. James 4 verse 9, Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Matthew 5 verse 4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. James 4 verse 10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. 1 Peter 5 verse 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. James 4 verses 11 to 12, Speak not evil one of another. Brethren, he that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver, who is able to save and to destroy, who art thou that judgest another? Mark 7 verse 1, Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. James 2 verse 8 KJV, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. The Lord's will, James 4 verses 13 to 17, go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor, that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live, and do this, or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If the Lord will, a familiar saying today by many who use it out of its context. God's will is revealed for us today in the dispensation of grace today, by following the word written for us today. God is not using signs for us today, to prove his will. We are not Israel looking for signs to find God's will. No laying out of fleece today. Chapter 5, Fall into Condemnation James 5 verses 1 to 3, Go to now. Ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, 
and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. 2 Timothy 2 verse 17 And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. James 5 verses 4 to 6 Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, creeth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth, and been wanton, ye have nourished your hearts, as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Cankered, eaten. The Lord of Sabaoth, this is a military term for a conqueror. Isaiah 1 verse 9, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Romans 9 verse 29, and as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma, and been made like unto Gomorrah. When the Lord returns, there will be vengeance against the oppressor. Wrongs will be made right. Evil will be dealt with. Those who have suffered will be rewarded in the kingdom. How will a rich man have all of these goods during the tribulation period? He will have to receive the mark of the beast, and those that do will all be damned. James 5 verse 7, Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord, his coming to set up his kingdom, not the rapture. Matthew 24 verse 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Luke 21 verse 19, In your patience, possess ye your souls. The husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, Christ is the husbandman, and he must wait as well for the last of the fruit to ripen with the latter rain from God, but rest assured he will come. This will be a comfort to those suffering knowing that their deliverer is being patient as well, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. The early and latter rain, Christ received the early rain in the first century with those that made up the little flock of kingdom saints lead by the apostles. The fruit from the latter rain will be a result of all those saved in the tribulation period by the preaching of the 144,000 and the two witnesses as well as other believers in that time. Hosea 6 verse 3, Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. James 5 verse 8, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. No delays for a prophesied dispensation of grace, once the tribulation period begins. The return of Christ will once again be soon, and the kingdom will be at hand, literally. Patience is what will be needed for these tribulation saints to endure unto the end. Matthew 3 verse 2, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When reading the book of James, one only has to rightly divide the word of truth to understand how James could say the coming of the Lord draweth nigh since there has been a 2,000-year delay. It is because the dispensation of grace was not known until it was revealed unto Paul. This book was written before Paul received the revelation of the mystery concerning the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace. James 5 verses 9 to 11, Grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest ye be condemned, Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful, and of tender mercy. Lest ye be condemned, John 3 verse 19, and this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. John 5 verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. The patience of Job, James confirms that the story of Job is a type of the nation of Israel enduring the tribulation period. Job suffered like no other person I ever knew and he was rewarded double afterwards. Those that suffer in the tribulation period will be compensated by Christ. Hebrews 11 verses 32 to 40, And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthi, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yeah, moreover of bonds and imprisonment, 
they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts, and in mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Matthew 24 verse 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. James 5 verse 12, But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, is the ninth commandment given to the nation of Israel. The penalty for violating this is steep in the tribulation period. Exaggeration, swearing, making oaths, etc., all receive stiff punishment during this time. Notice the similarities between what James says and the words of Jesus to the lost sheep of the house of Israel while he walked among them preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 5 verses 34 to 37, But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be, yeah, yeah, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. James 5 verses 13 to 16, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. As Jesus healed all in Israel from their infirmities, so will Jews be healed in the tribulation period so that they can enter into the kingdom and fulfill their roles as a nation of priests. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Your elders cannot do this today, no matter how much anointing oil they use, or how fervent their prayers are. Priests were to be anointed with oil, before they could begin their ministry under the law. Exodus 28 verse 41, And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother, and his sons with him, and shalt anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. James 5 verses 17 to 18 Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth, by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Prayer for the believer in the tribulation period that is truly seeking God's will and not their own will be answered and answered immediately. Because the need will be great in those days, the response will also be great. James 5 verses 19 to 20 Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know, that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. James is writing to his brethren, the Jews, and many will be led astray by the wicked one in the last days. God still wants his people to reach out to those who have erred in the faith to try to convert those people to save them from eternal death. This verse teaches that it is the sins of the one needing conversion that shall have his sins hidden besides the fact that this is not written to us today in the dispensation of grace. Ephesians 3 verse 2, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you ward, 